Hi, folks, and welcome to another episode of Money and Politics. Coming to you on another cold day in the Midwest, and I'm coming to you a bit early today, actually about 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, I'm going to be pretty much tied up for the, a good part of the day today. And uh, we have today a sad day for most investors. In fact, last time I checked, every one of my positions was uh, down today. So as a reminder, I'm not a uh, broker, I'm not a financial advisor, but I do like to uh, share what I know uh, about investing uh, over 40 years, and you can take it or leave it. It's yours, but hopefully it's helpful. As we look at uh, where uh, TSMP is, uh, at the moment it's down below a buck. So a while back I had a rocket ship going up, to announce that uh, TSMP had broken a buck and now we're below the dollar. It was uh, obviously as as high briefly as a dollar 90, but it did close at a dollar 71. Uh, oh, I don't know, I'd have to go back and look, but roughly a week ago. And so a lot of people are asking over the period of time, uh, when should I sell? When should I sell? When should I buy? As I've said before, no one can know these things. The best investor in the world doesn't know what a stock is going to do necessarily the next day. By the way, let me get this out of the way. Uh, here's my new Twitter handle. Uh, my son was critical of that handle, and I understand it was supposed to be money in politics. Twitter gave that to me. You can let me know in the comments if you think I should start over. Maybe we can get a better name for the Twitter handle than that. Uh, but if you're happy with that, let me know that too. Remember the movie, uh, The Karate Kid? And I want to talk to you about something here, not so much about what the stocks are doing today, but kind of a broader concept. The Karate Kid, where the kid wanted to learn how to do karate. And he goes, just, you know, just tell me the moves. And of course, he was doing wax on, wax off, and painting the um, painting the fence. I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about that today for a moment, because when people say, "Should I sell?" here's here's some things I would want you to think about when you're investing. Number one, what are your goals? And you might say, "Well, my goal is to be rich." Okay. So what's rich? And I'm not being esoteric here. Uh, I'm not trying to play word games. I can't say that I can help you become rich like, you know, Donald Trump or Donald Trump, the businessman who has his own jet, uh, who owns golf courses. I think for a lot of people, what rich is and what they're striving for is that they don't want to feel financially threatened. They want to know that they can put food on the table, have a roof over their head, pay the bills, and you know go about their life. And they don't want to worry about having to lose their job or you know not not be able to afford things. And I don't mean things like you know boats and planes, but just the the necessities of life. Now, if that's your goal, and I think that's a good goal, then I would say that that's very achievable. And when I hear that something like half of all Americans don't have $1,000 saved up, that's, that is inexcusable. Those are people who are not working with any commitment to giving themselves a financial foundation. A financial foundation can be achieved, and I would say by virtually anyone. And who, who can't it be achieved by? Well, I mean, if you're fighting cancer or some other major medical malady, something like that, that, you know, that's obviously a different story. But for the average person, and if you're an average, especially young person, you can achieve financial independence. And by that, I mean, if you had in today's dollars, as I record this in 2021, if you had in today's dollars, $3,500 or $4,000 a month coming in that was not dependent upon your job 
you would be financially independent. With that kind of money, $3,500 or $4,000 a month coming in, you could put a roof over your head, food on the table, and pay your utility bills. You, you know, no one's going to say you're incredibly wealthy, but you would be financially secure. Now, that doesn't mean that you stop building your wealth if you hit that. But what I'd want you to do today is start to have a plan to, to achieve that. At least that's a goal that you can strive for. Because if you're, if you're just buying stocks and hoping they go up like a rocket, like TSMP did recently, uh, and, and I want to get rich quick, I want to be a millionaire quick. Well, okay, I mean, that, I'm not saying that's bad. But if you don't have some kind of a plan, then you don't have what's happening to your stocks. You don't have, you don't have any context, okay? So let me give you a, a couple of ideas real quick. When we were, when, when TSMP was at a buck 71, if you had purchased 10,000 shares, let's just say, when it was 20 cents, and you had invested $2,000, and then it's, at a buck 71 and it's $17,000. And it did that in roughly a month. I'm not saying sell all of your shares, but here's one thing I would do periodically. You can take a little bit of money off the table because what you should be having as a goal is to build up your wealth. And as different stocks, I'm not saying just TSMP, I'm using it as one example. Take some money off the table and park it and make sure that you have cash. I tell people for your portfolio, you should always have cash as a position. You should have, I would recommend 10% or 10% to 30% in cash. It depends upon the circumstances. The market goes up and down. Over time, it goes up. If you build up cash positions as it goes up, number one, you're going to be more secure. You're going to feel safe. You're not going to panic and sell. Uh, and number two, when the market takes a dip, when the market goes down because of the coronavirus or 9-11 happens or who knows what. A couple of years ago, it was the Greek uh, debt crisis. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen that impact the, the market that we can't control, that the companies we invest in can't control. So if you've built up a cash position by periodically taking some money, selling a couple of shares, then you're going to be in a position when the market goes down to buy shares lower. That's number one. Last year, a friend of mine uh, who had inherited some money upon the death of her mother, and she doesn't know much about investing, so she was asking my advice what she should do with her portfolio. So last March, uh, when the market hit rock bottom, we didn't, we didn't know that was rock bottom until we got to about April and then the market had come up some. So one of the things that I suggested she buy, and I've talked to before about this, and you can look at the video uh, that I produced on leveraged index funds, but I had suggested that she buy TQQQ, three Qs. At the time, it was about $40. Now, in January, or actually December, I was saying, you know, the, the shares you bought, she invested about, uh, let's see, she had about, she bought 3, 000, 300 shares when it was about 40. So that was about $12,000. When we got to December, the TQQ had gone from $40 up to close to $200. Not quite $200, but in that about a dollar and $195. And she had so much money in her portfolio in the TQQ in that one position that I said, it, it gets to be a little dangerous to have all that money in one position. So at that point, she sold uh, approximately 200 shares of the 300. We get to January and the TQQ split two for one. So her 100 shares went to 200 shares. 
but she sold about 200 shares of the 300 that she had in December at close to 200 hours. Let's just use 200 hours as a rough number. So those 200 times uh, 200 shares times 200 hours, she, she got about $40,000 out. She'd invested 12,000. That's a way that even when you buy something that doesn't pay a dividend, you can kind of create your own dividend. And what? think of the logic here. She, she was able to take that money that she, the profit, and set some of that aside. She's still in the game. She still had, even if it hadn't split, she would have had 100 shares of the TQQQ. But with the split, she has 200 shares. So she can still profit on the upside, but now if it goes down, she doesn't feel badly because she's already taken her original investment of $12,000 and tripled it. So the problem that some people have is when they just buy something and they don't have any kind of a larger game plan, they don't know when to sell. They don't know you know, when to sell, when to buy, should they take a, some of the money off the table. So this is my, this is my uh, karate kid speech. And what I would say is you want to have a goal to build your wealth over time and you don't want to lose it. You don't want to have something go up where you have a gain of $30,000 or $50,000 and then just have that come down and that entire gain evaporates. But if you have a goal of saying, I want to build up cash over time, and with that cash, I mean, you can buy other shares, you can buy dividend shares, you can go out and buy some real estate if you want. You want to be able to build cash flow in your over the course of your life that is not tied to your job. And if you like your job and you're doing well and you're, you know, your salary's increasing, or your business is increasing, that's great. Then when you have that $1,000 coming in a month, 2,000, 3,000, that's fine. You've, you've got that as security. If you're making $50,000 at your job and you're content there, you're gonna be even more content if you have 3,000 to $4,000 coming in a, a month on the side, whether it's from real estate, whether it's from dividend, whatever it is, okay? So that would be the thing. And if you don't need it, then your wealth is growing. If you lose that job, well, then you have something to fall back on. So you're covering your bases. And that's the thing I would say. Let me throw out one more thing here just briefly. To put a TQQ in, and you know, I've, I've talked about leverage indexes. We've talked about Humble. Uh, we're going to talk about other things as we go along. I would also have you look at your stocks. The beginner thinks all stocks are created equal or you know, looks at them more or less the same. You want to buy stocks for different reasons. And I want you to think of yourself as being a manager of a baseball team. You know, I might, I'm a fan of the St. Louis Cardinals. They just signed a new third baseman who's reputed to be the best third baseman in baseball. So everyone can be real excited about the third baseman, you know, just as we might be real excited about what Humble is and pros the prospects for Humble going forward. But no matter how good the third baseman is, uh, he's not going to help the team if they have a problem in left field. He's not going to be solving the problem with the catcher. He's not going to be solving the problem with the bullpen. You have to look at your stocks as serving a different purpose. Sometimes you're going to buy a stock because you want the dividend. Sometimes you want a stock because it's going to be a turnaround play that you're going to buy and hold for six months. Uh, you know, right now, I, I think some of the stocks like uh, the cruise lines are a turnaround play. Disney, to some extent, is a turnaround play. Turnaround as the world economy opens up. Other stocks like uh, TQ, uh, I'm sorry, uh, like Humble, we're going to buy and hold it for, in my estimation, three to five years, maybe 10 years. I mean, why would you want to sell this thing if it's just growing to become, you know, like an Amazon? 
We don't know if it will, but it does have the prospects early on for that. To that extent, we're kind of like, uh, Humble is like our star player in the minor leagues, and we're hoping that it makes the major leagues. So it's a hot prospect. But I want you to be able to think strategically, strategically uh, about your own financial wherewithal, your own financial foundation. If you make money and you, you take some money off here and there, you know, if, if something like Humble, if you had sold some at a buck 70 or two dollars, and, and then you go back in, you know, where it's uh, right now at 96 cents, hey, you know, that's, that's a good play. Now you didn't know when it was a buck seventy or a buck ninety that it wasn't going automatically to three dollars. We can't tell the future. You know, you you have to be able to make these decisions, and you're not always going to be able to make them right because you're not clairvoyant. But what you can do is have a larger plan of building financial security, and don't be afraid to take a little bit off the table here and there, uh, and and you know feel good about that. My uh, friend that I was telling you about who sold her TQQ, uh, she also took some money off the table of Facebook. Now, Facebook has gone up since she sold it, but she's very secure now because she has a much larger cash position. And right now, we're in a weird place. I'll talk about uh, where the economy is right now. I think, I think, my, my crystal ball, and I, I say that because I often tell people no one has a crystal ball, but if I have to project forward right now, I would say that the, the economy in 2021, I think, and I could be entirely wrong, I think is going to do well because the world economy, economy I expect will open up over the course of this year, due in large part to the vaccines and the distribution of the vaccines. Going forward, I don't know. Uh, and I think we have to always realize that there's a danger out there, that you can't just say happy days are here again. You, you have to be in the game, trying to build wealth. The market is a great place to build wealth, uh, but you also have to have some kind of an overall approach. And so I would say is set a goal and, and don't be one of these people that doesn't have $1,000 saved up. Uh, you know, set a goal to where you want to have your cash position, uh, if not every month, you know, by every quarter, you want to have your cash position uh, wealthier than it was the, the previous quarter, the, the previous three-month period, Okay. As I say, one, that gives you ammunition to buy good stocks when they fall, and two, that gives you also the emotional security that you're not going to panic when the market goes down. In the meantime, folks, uh, stay warm, stay healthy, and uh, good investing. Thank you so much for joining. And again, if you want, uh, follow me on Twitter, and also you can, of course, make your comments uh, on these uh, YouTube videos that I'm producing. And I greatly appreciate watching those as well.